Hello and welcome to this edition of Hack Naked TV for November 20th, 2015. I'm your host, Bo Bullock, and today we're going to talk about bypassing BitLocker. We're also going to talk about uh, sending spoofed emails to your Gmail and Android apps, as well as how much money can you make off those zero days you've been holding on to anyway. As always, Hack Naked TV is brought to you by Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Contact Black Consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com. And by Cybrary.it, the latest hacking and security training from Cybrary.it. All right, let's jump right into bypassing BitLocker. So BitLocker is a, a full disk encryption solution from Microsoft. Uh, a researcher at Black Hat Europe this year released an awesome proof of concept on how to actually get past BitLocker for an attacker. Uh, so when we talk about bypassing BitLocker, we're not talking about breaking the encryption it uses exactly. We're talking about bypassing the authentication mechanism that would allow you to get past uh, the BitLocker encryption protection. So let's walk through how this attack would actually work. First of all, you're going to uh, require a uh, domain join window system. Very common uh, to see BitLocker used in Windows environments these days. Um, if, if you use BitLocker, you can store the recovery key in Active Directory. Um, so a lot of organizations will uh, have their laptops using, that are using BitLocker as members of the domain. Uh, so let's say an attacker steals one of those. What are they going to have to do next? They're going to have to set up a mock domain controller uh, that they're, they're going to essentially attach the, uh, the, the stolen laptop to. Um, and so this mock DC, um, what they're going to have to have is they're going to have to have a user account set up on the DC that would resemble the one that's, uh, that, that previously had been used on the laptop. So, uh, you know, while an attacker won't have the credentials to log into the laptop, they might be able to see a username uh, of somebody who's previously logged in. And uh, what this actual exploit is going to take, take advantage of is the, the cached password of that user on that system. Uh, so let's say they set up, they set up a, a username on the DC with the same uh, username that's on the stolen laptop that's encrypted with BitLocker. Uh, next would be to uh, attach, the, um, attach the laptop to the DC uh, and attempt authentication. So uh, the other key thing here is when you set the password on the DC itself is to set it to really old date so that uh, it's actually an expired password. Um, and what will happen next is when you actually try to authenticate with that credential to the domain controller, domain controller is going to say, Sorry, dude. Uh, I, you know that's that's an old password. You need to change it. Um, whenever you go to change it, it will actually allow you. Uh, it will actually store that new password that you change it to as a cached password on the BitLocker protected laptop. Um, and and the reason this works and it's kind of strange is that uh, the the user authentication happens before computer authentication. So normally. Uh, a computer has to authenticate as well to the domain controller uh, before you could actually do any sort of uh, domain act domain based activities. But in this case, um, user authentication happens first. So when the domain controller says that the user's password is old and you change it, you can still log in. It, it'll fail the login to the domain um, just because of the computer authentication. But uh, what you can then do is just take the laptop offline, use the cache password to lo then log into the, the laptop and boom, you've bypassed BitLocker. So uh, Microsoft uh, actually came out with a patch for that. It's uh, uh, MS15122. All right, let's talk about spoofing Gmail, uh, spoofing emails sent to G uh, Gmail app. So uh, an awesome vulnerability was uh, was released this week or found by a researcher. Uh, there's, there's a flaw in, in the actual Android app on uh, Android Gmail app um, where uh, if you were to look at the sending address of somebody who's taken advantage of this uh, vulnerability, it, they could spoof anything they wanted to, and it looks like they're sending it from whoever they want to. It does not, did not display the actual uh, sender's email address. So how did you do it? It's, it's a very simple attack. So the display name that you would use to set up uh, your, your display name for, like, let's say you're, you're a Gmail user, um, you would just modify it to include a quote. Um, and there was a parsing bug in the Gmail app that would basically eliminate the uh, sending the, the the standard sending email or the original valid sending email address from being displayed. So let's say you set, you change it to something like uh, security um, quote security at google dot com, but really your email address was whatever at gmail dot com. Um, you were to let's say you just you were to send that to somebody who has an Android. Uh, that had the Gmail app. They open it up. They look at the email that was sent. It looks like it's coming from security at google.com. Without jumping into the headers, there's really not much you can tell. It really looks like it's coming from security at google.com. So you can imagine like the phishing uh, attacks that could occur 
with this particular vulnerability. But what's even worse is that uh, the uh, Google security team responded with, um, well, yeah, we're not really going to fix that because it's not, it's not a security issue. Um, well, a couple days later, they after, after this particular vulnerability received a little bit more no notoriety, they changed their minds. So this is going to be fixed sometime soon. One ping to rule them all. So uh, this is kind of an interesting vulnerability uh, that was released this week as well. Uh, so PNG files, your typical image that you find on many websites and actually all over the place. Uh, w the libpng library that most softwares would use to open those uh, types of files actually had multiple buffer overflows. Um, and it was originally interpreted to mean that all libpng applications were vulnerable, which if that were the case, that would mean operating systems are vulnerable, that mean web browsers are vulnerable, that mean uh, many of like the media players that open up, the, you know, you specify like album artwork on, those could potentially be vulnerable. Anything that would open up a PNG file allegedly was vulnerable, but uh, the actual uh, vulnerability researcher came out and said, well, no, the app would actually have to compute memory in, in a specific method, in a specific way that's really not commonly used. Um, so the actual scope of this vulnerability might not be as far as uh, originally was thought. Um, but in case that uh, you know you, you do use libpng, you should definitely patch it. There are patches that have been released um, just in case uh, you do use one of these methods to compute memory. Um, so here's a zero day pricing chart. So let's say you're a, an exploit researcher um, and you've, you've got a few zero days lying around. Well, now you've got a handy chart to go look up and see how, how much you might actually make off those zero days if you wanted to go sell them instead of just holding on to them. Uh, well, so the company Zerodium, this is a company that we talked about in the last Hack Naked that uh, uh, they, they actually did the $1 million bug bounty. They decided to come out with this, this list of prices that they're, they're, uh, they're willing to pay out to uh, researchers who find zero-day exploits, you know, remote code execution type bugs, um, as well as a few other types. Uh, so at the top of the list, you've got mobile, OS, uh, mobile OSs. So things like iOS, if you, can, if you can come out with a remote jailbreak for iOS, uh, they're going to pay you up to like 500 grand. Um, you know, that's, that's followed by Chrome and Adobe products. So if you find a, a remote code execution vulnerability in Chrome or Adobe Flash Player or PDF Reader, uh, they'll pay you up to hundred grand. On the other end of the spectrum, uh, on, on the lower uh, end of the scale, uh, up, up to like five grand uh, for just, you know, vulnerabilities in WordPress, vBulletin, and Joomla. Um, so yeah, if, you, uh, if you're an exploit developer, you know, this chart might be handy. So uh, go check it out. That's it for this edition of Hack Naked TV. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you want to check out more, check out hacknaked.tv. Uh, check out the show notes from Security Weekly at securityweekly.wiki.wiki.securityweekly.com. Wiki, wiki and you can email us at the show at hacknaked.tv. And I'm on Twitter at DAFTAC. Have a great weekend. Bye.